Howdy, folks. Hello, 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 and welcome to another wonderful evening of Overwatch here at the Outlet. We've got preseason Taco Tuesday coming your way. I am Stridal24, and joining me for tonight's cast is Piper. How you doing, man? I am doing pretty good tonight, and I'm feeling pretty good about this matchup. I think we are going to have a bit of a barn burner going on here, and I don't say that lightly with one of our teams being burned, stealing your pun action there. All right, I see you. I see you. Yeah, no, I am I am super excited for this matchup. Uh, MSXL, one of the first teams I ever got to cast back in the day, Season 1 of Owlet Tournament. They actually ended up winning Season 1. So, you know, they have a lot to prove. Didn't play season two. So they're kind of like, they're coming back to get their title back. You know, they sat on the sidelines for long enough. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit of uh, rust to shake off. Maybe maybe something to prove here. You know, they, they sat on the sidelines for season two, like you said, and had to watch somebody else win the uh, Majors title. So perhaps they're going to look to, you know, make a statement here in this preseason action. I have no doubt about that. And then Burn, Burn's coming in with the... Uh couple of new people or should i say a lot of new people uh, yeah only i believe merge and chunk are the two that are kind of the uh the mainstays the guys who uh the players that stuck on after season two mm -hmm. yeah it does it does seem that way that they have a, a fairly new roster my and msxl sorry I almost said nyxl there oh boy msxl on the other hand uh, they have a lot of returning members uh as we talked about flamia uh Surfy, one of their tank players, a whole bunch of other ones. Only two new players from what we can remember. But Burn, it's going to be interesting for them. They were semi-finalists season two, so we're going to see if they're going to be able to make a, a successful team that they, they had last season, because obviously semi semi-finals is pretty good. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we got one team here that's trying to get their title back, and the other team, they almost got the title last season. They're, they're, they are hunting to get that number one spot once again. And uh, as far as hunting to get that number one spot, as a Lucio player, there's no map to show who's the better Lucio than Elios. So many elemental opportunities, and it's where we're going next. Oh, definitely, especially on Well. I mean, there's literally a giant hole in the middle of the map. If that wasn't made for environmental kills, I don't know what is. So definitely Lucio, probably going to be something that we're looking at here on Ilios. And it'll be interesting to see if uh, that is what the teams are going to pull out here. Obviously, the meta has been a little bit unsettled in pro play because of the introduction of Sigma and the double shield meta really coming about. But it'll be mm -hmm. interesting to see what these teams do here, especially because I've always found an outlet. The most exciting thing is the fact that we see a lot of teams get creative and try a lot of off-meta compositions. So it'll be interesting to see if we see any of that here in the preseason. I agree, and especially because the preseason, you know, as much as I want to see all of the hardcore interesting strats that these teams are going to bring out, I don't want them to bring it out just yet. I want them to kind of, you know, test a, por a portion of that strategy. Don't don't give away the whole the whole shebang, but have fun with it. You know, these these matches are kind of just a let's show other teams what we can do. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not it's not let's, let's let's you don't have to buffer your record with the preseason matches. Yeah, that's you definitely don't want to come out and play all your big, big barn burner strats that are going to, you know, swing the game in your favor. But at the same time, you know, there's got to be a little bit of a mental aspect in there of, well, we still want to win to, you know, assert our dominance and flex on those other teams that we're coming out strong and we're looking to win the league this season. No doubt that you, you never want to be the team that lost lost your first game. No, so. definitely not. You want to you want to get the ball rolling here. You want to show that you're in good form heading into the season for sure. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start that by heading into our first map here of Ilios. And we do have I believe we have Microsoft Excelsior on the red side for for this point. Yep. And we have Burn there on the blue. So Burn and Blue. I hate that as a Houston Outlaws fan, but that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> we'll try to keep the uh, team al allegiances out of it, not start any uh, fist fights or anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what these compositions start to line up as. Elios, of course, this is Lighthouse, so we're not going to find those great boops on the well, but it's still a beautiful place to get those environmental kills. The way the doors are positioned around the point, which is that small little area um, to walk upon. Lucio's, Hammond's especially, 
really do shine on this map. Yeah, I mean, there is a huge opportunity. Like, the point itself is right around an edge, so there's so many opportunities for boops and stuff like that. And, I mean, that's kind of reflected both of these teams coming out. Their preliminary picks looking like Lucio's. Hopefully, this isn't going to be cast or cursed, and now that I've mentioned it, they're going to pick something else. Hopefully, I'm not being debated right now, but we should be good. <laughs> uh, but I'm liking what we're seeing from uh, both of these teams. I'm not surprised to see an Arisa coming out right now. Arisa really really has established itself as a main tank in this meta. But I do like the hog on the side of MSXL. I'm really a fan of that uh, halt hook combo. The only thing they're going to have to watch out for here is the fact that Chunk is on that May, and that's going to make it... If Chunk uses their wall effectively, they'll be able to block some of those hooks. Or if we see Burn pull out a Sigma as well, Sigma Shield also incredibly good at blocking and denying those halt hook combinations. Yeah, I I really do love the the creativity that's kind of come with the two 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 and putting May back into the meta a little bit with that halt hook, uh, being able to use that wall, even if you can use that wall just as a purely defensive measure against that hook, you are already doing so much by just completely taking that cooldown out of the fight. Yeah, you're and you're essentially denying a, a kill. You're taking two big cooldowns away that have the ability to. Uh, deny space to the enemy team and also to garner a kill. I mean, if you get a hook on a squishy, they're pretty much done for. It's it's big being able to use that May wall in a defensive way because if you don't use it in a defensive way and they do get that hook, even if it's on a tank, you're going to have to dump a, a boatload of resources into that person that got hooked to try to save their life or that's going to be a free pick for the other team. Very much so. We'll see if there's going to be any free picks coming out because they will be running that Sigma. So they will have not only the Orisa Shield, the Mobile Sigma Shield, and that May Wall to kick things off. And our teams are not going to waste any time do doing so. Both Lucio speed boosting their teams to get to the point. Sonic Arrows revealing where people are. The fight in a bit of a stagnant pos positioning phase right now. There goes the early hook on the Bishop, and he didn't get the Fortify down. That's going to be yeah. a bad story there as Rimini gets another kill on the merge. And now we're seeing MSXL shake off the rust and roll to the point as they take this team fight and that's exactly what we talked about that that halt hook combo being so strong i mean once they got bishop in the hook he was pretty much done for not able to get those cooldowns out quick enough and it was so hard for his team to use the cooldowns to save his life and that's a that's a one fight off of that halt hook combo that we talked about very difficult to to go against that if you're not preemptively using that fortify if you don't catch the halt going above you it can be a bad story so we'll see if they're able to make anything different here there goes the early kill from merge onto remedy getting himself a little bit of a revenge and the boop comes off but nobody falls everybody able to make it back to the point and that's huge as loner grabs himself too amplification matrix from maya there trying to change the tides of battle as the coalescence from flame gets thrown back in there's the Immortality Field finally baited out. They're able to take it away with the Coalescence, but the Freeze on point is going to force MSXL to kind of move around in a bit of a shady faction, but they're still getting the kills. Merge is doing his best here on point with his supports to try and change it, but it's not looking like it's going to happen. Windmill and Flame both grabbing themselves a couple of spots in the kill feed. And right now, ult-wise, ult a lot was used there for, uh, for Burn, but they didn't really get what they were looking for. Yeah, that was a that was a really scrappy fight. I mean, alts coming out on both sides, but they none of them were really decisive, and it really came down to the DPS players hitting their shots. Loner and Merge both finding some shots. Remedy as well chiming in. So I think that was really one of the big difference makers there. Ooh, speaking of difference makers, the dragons come out on both sides, but one of them makes a bigger difference than the other. Merge grabbing himself a couple of kills while Solnil helps out with that with that little uh, with the graviton field coming out from Sigma. But still, the kills are coming in for MSXL. They just, Burn can just not find a way into this point right now. You know, that May is really good once you have the point, but taking the point is a whole different story as we see Chunk go to Tracer to try and get this last contest. Yeah, I mean, it... You're the kill the boops! <laughs> There's that boop. And yeah, I mean, time ticking down now. I, there wasn't really a chance there for Burn to be able to... To touch i mean msxl they did a great job of really embedding themselves on that point and they weren't able to really burn wasn't really able to find a way onto that point there msxl doing an excellent job kind of battening down the hatches and uh fending off all the attacks that were incoming 
Now we'll see what they're what they're able to do here. You have a different kind of style of map. This this time the point opens up a bit, so we'll be able to see Merge take to the skies on that Farah, hopefully. Yeah, I think the Farah here. I think the Farah here would be a good swap if they invested the resources into having a mercy pocket there. I mean, the damage boost plus the ability to heal the Farah. If you have a good Farah player, pharmacy is such a great combination, especially on this map. There's so much space for a Farah to get those sight lines and to dance around and really not expose themselves to any sort of DPS uh, or hit scan threats on the other team. Especially with Loner and Remedy there on the Hanzo and McCree, that could be a very, very difficult task. Windmill! Ooh, with the Fortify just in time right there, so he didn't get booped into the hole now. There goes the Halt Hook combination, but the Sigma Shield is there to protect everything as they begin the posturing phase at the beginning of this point. You see McCree going off to the left on a bit of a flank, looking to get himself a cheeky kill. He does find the flashbang, but it's Merge who finds the opening kill. Windmill's going to be going down into the hole, and so now it's a 5v6 on point. The hook goes out, but the hog goes down. Chunk able to find the shot, and there's a big boop from Red Panda grabbing two as he evens the scales in the fight. Bishop gets to the help of the Immortality Field as he tries to take out Flame on this Moira, but she's a little bit too slippery. Able to find her in the end there. One, one last member of MSXL on the point. Red Panda on this Lucio trying to get that boop again. He's going to have to back out. And we will see the percentage go to burn as they're looking to write a different story here on this point. Yeah, I mean, Merge there, obviously able to help find that opening pick, putting a lot of pressure on this MSX MSXL side. Remedy, a lot of this work is falling to him to be able to find those kills on the Farah. And with a pocket, it's incredibly hard to do as a McCree. You've got to find a, so many combinations of shots in a row that if you can't make that happen, it's going to be very difficult for you to counter the Farah. And I think the big thing going into this next fight is that they're going to have Blizzard, they're going to have Merge's Barrage, and they're also going to have that Amplification Matrix. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and use that Amplification Matrix straight out of the gate and throw a rock through it, and Mason is going to find that with his face as Big Muzzy brings Merge back into the fight. Such a crucial thing. Oh, no, Merge falling into the hole, but that's all right. He's got some jets to get himself right back out, and at 53%, and this XL is starting to feel the heat just a little bit from Burn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're starting to feel a bit of the pressure here. I mean, hopefully this dragon might be able to open things up here, going to get rid of their position. And Remedy finding that pick is going to be absolutely huge here. Really beautiful job there. They're able to hide the Deadeye within the Dragon Strike, so they can at least secure that one kill. Merge going to return the favor. Does get slept during the Barrage, but is able to find at least one kill. There goes the Halt, the Hook, and the end of the well goes Bishop. Yeah, I mean, great play there coming out from MSXL. I mean, Loner using that dragon to split their team, force them out of their very dominant position on that corner of the point. And that really opened up the way for MSXL to surge onto the point, use their ultimates to get a couple big kicks, and then from there just clean up the fight. Now, anybody who's heard me cast before, Viper, always hears me go on and on and on about ult economy because it's it's crucial. Yeah, and it's, coming it's into definitely this crucial. Fight, Definitely in favor of Burn, but oh no! Oh, that was a dirty Man. hook. Here go the ults coming out from MSXL. Even though they are up one in the fight, they're going to go ahead and commit Windmill's Supercharger to the fight and the whole hog in the back. It will take Bishop out, making this a 4v6. And then a late nano boost on to Mason, most likely to try and get him back up to his ultimate as quickly as possible. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think a couple of those ultimates there were a little questionable. The supercharger, I could understand even with the pick, because you do still need to secure the fight win. But I feel like the whole hog and the nano are maybe a little bit overkill. And I mean, well, that's a big pick there from Flamia on to merge. But mm -hmm. I think with nearly six ultimates coming online on the side of burn, I think MSXL has it all to do in this fight. And I, I really think they might struggle here to see this one out. Let's see what they're able to get here. There goes the hook onto Soul once again. He's not able to do anything. He uses the ult to attempt to get out of the hole, but it's not going to help him out as the Blizzard comes on to point, only finds Mason on the hog. So they will be able to secure that kill as the Amplification Matrix is helping Maya keep the rest of the team alive. As Merge has that barrage and is not able to find any good positioning as he's still coming back from spawn on that Farah. Able to position himself on the high ground, but they are not able to take the point in a very lucky ice block there from cool. Chunk to not get pulled into the well. Oh, but here it is, Merge with the huge oh. two-man barrage, getting three actually out of it, and that's going to allow them to get the flip here. Oh, what a pull! 
That pull was absolutely crucial there, but Merge able, almost able to get the kill on Amaya, but not able to finally finish it out. So Red Panda and Maya almost able to hold on to the point for a little bit longer. But beautiful barrage there from Merge, learning from his mistake last time, targeted the Ana first so he couldn't get slept. He was able to get the McCree as well, but a quick turnover maybe as we have a lot of quick characters coming in. There's the attack visor from Loner looking to find some easy kills as Remedy gets the huge seismic slam onto Big Muzzy from that 125 spot. Chunk able to even it out, taking out one of the healers for MSXL. Without that Lucio, they won't be able to do much, but the flank is coming through from Remedy on that Doomfist. He's looking for an easy kill, and he gets it again. Maya and Bishop both falling to that Doomfist as the point ticks over towards MSXL, and Remedy staying true to his name. They couldn't get the point. What's the Remedy? Remedy. That was just fantastic to watch. I love watching good Doomfist players. I mean, he's absolutely tilting to play against, you know, when they're on the enemy team and they have a great Doomfist, but just great use of cooldowns there to get those combos, and he really cleaned up that point there. I think the big thing, though, that, that went wrong for Vern there was that they kept losing their tank line first. Very frequently, Solnul was the person that was going down first to that halt hook combo. I mean, we saw how many hooks take him into the well, and At least every, three or four. Yeah, and if it wasn't if it wasn't Solnul going into the well, it was Bishop. And when you lose either your main or off tank player like that at the start of a fight, it instantly puts you at a disadvantage because you've lost so much damage mitigation and you've just really lost the ability to tank all that damage from the other team. So I think that was really the big thing there. They were making use of that halt hook combo to good effect and it really helped them win a lot of those fights. And that hollow combo can be quite overwhelming. And another thing that I did want to point out was the big switches from Loner off of the off of the Hanzo onto the soldier there at the towards the end of well. That soldier it, it was much less remedy on the McCree, but it was much more flame on that Ana and Loner on the soldier that were able to suppress um and put a lot of pressure. For, yeah. Yeah, for a good for a good period of the of the point. Yeah, I think I think Merge was uh, playing a little too cautiously as well. I mean, obviously we saw Merge have a lot of effect, providing a lot of threat from the skies, but I would have liked to see Merge when Merge went on those harder flank angles, getting those barrages, especially when you have a Mercy Pocket, you can be a little bit more aggressive. I would have liked to see Merge try to get around the uh, windmill in the center of the point there and try to use that as cover instead of just hovering above your team try to use your mobility a little bit more to your advantage there i think that maybe could have made a difference but again they really had to try and counter they really 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 needed to try to counter that halt hook combo and they they just weren't making it happen even with the maywall and the sigma shield so the maywall the sigma shield they are not um they're not they're not working out what do you change in their in their shoes, what do you what do you bring into the situation to kind of spice things up, to switch it up, to deal with that combination? Because it can be a daunting thing if they if they track your cooldowns correctly and they bait out that may wall and your sigma shield breaks. There's nothing you can do. Yeah, I mean it. I I mean that's the thing right now. I think Arisa is a really strong tank right now, probably the strongest main tank in the game at this current time in this current meta. So it's it's really hard to counter. And I think that you you kind of got to get creative with how you want to get around that if you're not going to play the mirror. I mean, obviously, I think Sigma Orisa, I think the Sigma provides a lot of ability to stop, stop those halt hooks because obviously they're going to wait for you to throw down the Orisa shield. They're going to throw their halt above the shield. And then once they get that pull, that's what they're going to hook. But if you're paying attention to it and you see that halt coming up over top of your shield, as a Sigma, you should be looking to throw that shield up over top. Um, but on that point particularly, there's one play that I really like to try to do, where if you bust out a Ryan-Zarya combination, maybe with a Lucio and a couple other, you know, more brawly DPS heroes, maybe the, a May Reaper or something like that. Obviously, May Reaper have been pretty tr strong together. And I think even if you push through that right hallway there, I mean, obviously, Ryan's a lot more of a mobile uh, main tank, but he's also a lot, uh, also fairly brawly. So I think if they maybe tried that and tried to put a lot of pressure into the front line of MSXL, they might have uh, gotten some results. But it's hard to say. I mean, I like I said, I thought that Arisa Sigma with the Sigma Shield should have been enough to deal with it. But obviously, they weren't weren't quite there. weren't quite uh, sending the Sigma Shields out at the right time.
I mean, I also would have liked to have seen them maybe try a different approach as far as the angles that they were trying to get at. They very they only went to that initial spot on um, as you go into the point. They never really went off to the other side of the point where that indoor um, area and the mini health pack are, where you are a little bit farther away from the point. So um, if they had tried the halt hook combo, if if MXL had tried the halt hook combo from that side, the hook wouldn't have reached as far. Yeah, I, I'm I'm surprised we didn't see that either. The other thing to consider, though, I, I wonder if in the mind of the burn players was Sigma's primary fire does have a, re a relatively short range, so even that might have not not reached and then you would have gotten less value out of that sigma pick as well and there would have been more value in say a hog because the hog has the longer range shield break potential with his right click but i don't know yeah i'm surprised we didn't see them try to change things up a little bit more well they still have plenty of time to you know switch things around and come back into this match y'all just saw burn and microsoft excelsior face off on Elios, and next up is Hanamura after this short break.
All right. I hope you guys are. I hope you guys are ready for some more Overwatch because me and Piper here are ready for some more Overwatch. Oh, Piper, what's most our next definitely. Map? Well, we have coming up Hanamura. It is going to be our assault map for today. And uh, I think it's going to be pretty exciting here. We saw some pretty exciting things on Ilios. Obviously, MSXL came out on top there. And I'll be interested to see, I, I think, on Hanamura, we're going to see some more of that Orisa Sigma, Orisa Hog that we saw. Because it's it's pretty popular these days. Yeah, nowadays it's kind of difficult like to play that Reinhardt or that Winston. Especially on maps like Hanamura where you have such defined... <coughs> excuse me. And I would say extreme choke points. Oh, yeah. I mean, Orisa's shield is perfect for it. Sigma's shield now, perfect for holding those choke points. And there's so many heroes now in this game that have really good CC. I mean, they, we just added some another new hero, Sigma, who has CC. It's really hard for a Winston to get a lot of value on a dive because there's so many swaps and counters that you can make that it just makes the game unplayable for him. I mean, he gets CC'd and he's pretty much done. <laughs> Uh, Reinhardt, hard to get, hard for him to get a lot of value because there's so many other heroes that have incredibly good poke, and it's hard for Reinhardt to cycle his shields and be able to put out damage at the same time. That's why <laughs> we've seen really Sigma Orisa come about because they have the ability to shield themselves and also put out poke damage at range. So they get a lot of value and they make it really, really difficult to use other main tanks like Reinhardt and Monkey Winston. Yeah, Monkey is a little too vulnerable when he gets in there because that crowd control, like you said. And then, you know, I, I I agree. The fact that Reinhardt has to choose between offensive or defensive. Yeah, and I mean, now with the 2-2-2 roll lock, you know, back when Goats was the meta, the reason that Reinhardt was so good was because he had so much peel. Because off tank's job really <laughs> is to provide a lot of peel. I mean, Zarya's bubble is a perfect example, right? It gives somebody pretty much 200 HP, more or less. And uh, Diva's d defense matrix, right? It eats up so all those projectiles. But because you can only have one off tank now, you just can't get enough peel and support for a Reinhardt to be viable. But as we say that, we are going to see a Reinhardt coming out here for MSXL. And I think I think we might need to keep an eye here on Remedies. He's got the, got the sim, so they're going to go for a teleport. Straight to point, it is. But they're going to be met with some some turrets there from Merge, which they will be able to take care of rather quickly. The Reinhardt now on point, able to brawl as he pleases Merge with the first kill onto that Reaper. And Merge going insane right now. Mason not able to stay alive as the high charge beam from Remedy tries to get something done here. But yeah. it does not seem like it's going to happen. Yeah, I think that's going to be the end of that push. Uh, one one thing that I noticed there, though, Windmill kind of went away chasing chasing a kill. And as that happened, I mean, Big Muzzy came in there. He had two very important nades. He hit Loner with one, which allowed them to take out the Reaper. Really the main source of damage in this kind of brawl comp that MSXL is playing. And then, yeah, it was more or less just a cleanup from there. And he hit another good nade that allowed them to clean it up. Ooh, here we go. The teleport again, this time onto the rock. Beside the point, they've realized there is a teleporter for the uh, opposing team, Burn, as well, and Merge coming in big in the kill feed once again on a Red Pen and Mithra. You've lost both of your supports in this fight. <clears throat> now all you can do is really stall it out. You don't have anything to recoup on that healing until your healers can, uh, can come back. But Merge yeah. doesn't care about that. Now that is Burn, they're looking to make a definitive statement here on Hanamura. Symmetra is incredibly strong right now. I mean... The ability to teleport your team around is huge, but her ultimate charges up so quickly, and she can put out so much damage, especially against shields, that she's really hard to play into if you are a comp that is going to rely on your shielding. She's a really good pick right now, and I'm not surprised to see it on this point at all. Me neither. As Me neither. I mean, <clears throat> the, the, her ability to charge up a beam on a shield and then turn to you as a as an enemy and just melt you down. It's like walking into a high charge Zarian. Oh no! What would have been a beautiful shatter by Windmill was taken out and away from him as the rest of the team teleported off the point. <clears throat> Graviton comes out, but the immortality field's there. So nothing really able to happen here. You see Mason kind of sitting off to the edge of the point here on the Zarya, trying to help out as Mithra overjudges the Wraith there on the Moira and sends herself 
to her death. I don't know what I just watched, but there is so many barriers on my screen. That was pretty crazy to watch. We had two sim walls up. We had an Arisa shield, a Sigma shield, a Rhine shield. That was pretty crazy. I'm glad to see that we're getting some swaps here from MSXL. I think after the, the first time that you try that sim strat, you've lost the element of surprise and you need to make a change. And I think the change of remedy here is going to provide a lot of value. I mean, all they're doing right now with their bunker is that they're just teleporting away from your brawl comp, but hopefully your remedy is going to be able to provide some poke even when they teleport away. Rumi's able to do already up to 32% on that Farah, so being able to build up that ultimate quite quickly. Loner has the Death Blossom in hand now. He's gonna go ahead and commit that into the fight and into the kill feed he goes. All of the kills coming through now for MSXL, and you know what? 2CP, especially Hanamura, all you need is one fight. Yeah, I mean, really, once you've won that fight, you're you're more or less set, especially on the first points where the attacker or the defenders spawn sorry are so far away you win that fight as an attacker and you're pretty much guaranteed to take that first point second point though is where we might see some more stalls so msxl is going to have to use all of this three minute time bank that they got here they are going to waste no time however getting the point but a beautiful halt's going to make them waste at least a little bit and send remedy and loner well alone they're on the point as the rest of the team now re-engages into a 5v6 merge dancing around on the sideline of the fight getting in that damage little by little as a huge anti-nade comes in from Big Muzzy. The Shatter, big behind the Amplification Matrix, opens up the door for Windmill and his team, looking to find something big here with 2 minutes and 44 seconds left on the clock. The Coalescence coming out from Mithra to solidify this point as Bishop gets taken down. It looks like the only people left on point right now are Chunk and Solnul as he's coming back to the point now. Does have that Sigma Ultimate, that grab Flux there. Able to find two inside the grab flex. He's able to find any kills. Not, however. <clears throat> they are going to go ahead and get back to the contest. Is about 75% has been butt up with a huge grab coming in off of the point. Only Bishop able to get through. But that's not going to matter as they make up for all of their lost time. Yeah, I think two minutes is a, actually a, a good time bank on Hanamori. It's really easy to hold, especially on that second point and delay for a long time. So good work there by MSXL to pull out a two minute time bank. I think the big thing there that was uh, spelled their success on that second point was that really big shatter there by Windmill. He, I think he caught Burn off guard there because they had thrown out the Nano. I don't think they were expecting it. And there was he, the big key there was that he caught the Baptiste in that shatter. So they couldn't throw down that immortality field that would have kept, his te kept the team alive. And because of that, they were able to roll in there and use pretty much all their cooldowns to delete Burn very quickly. Yeah, I think Windmill was looking to to kind of make up for the earlier shatter, which I do want to highlight. Huge game sense moment there for Burn as the Reinhardt came over the high ground for all of them to teleport back to the point as the shatter came yeah, down. Yeah, that was that was a and huge when it landed. Huge there was debate. no one there. Yeah, I they were ready for it, and I liked what Burn was doing there. They were almost. It's almost like they expected the, the sim teleport strat to happen. But I like the idea of being able to be highly mobile. And I think that plays well into the strengths of Symmetra, especially in the bunker, because it allowed them to, you know, kind of soak up that initial push. And then instantly they were back on the point. And there's all this space now that has to be taken by the enemy team. But they've already dumped all those resources into their initial push on that first part of the choke and now they they don't really have anything left to make up for all that space that's between them and you can just sit back on the point and poke away all right well let's see if they're gonna try and do the same thing beautiful teleport there onto the top of the house didn't even know that was a possible one but bishop is gonna go ahead and grab an early kill on a remedy taking out one of that double sniper composition and solidifying this point easy peasy it looks like burn is looking to solidify themselves a large time bank for the second point here as they one by one annihilate MSXL in that fight. That was incredibly impressive. And I mentioned this earlier when I was talking about MSXL's woes on trying to use that Symmetra strat. The thing is, it relies on surprise and you can only be surprised once. And that teleport was definitely a big surprise to MSXL. Burn was not, or sorry, Burn did that perfectly and msxl was not ready for that at all speaking of surprises another 
Interesting approach here, attacking from the left side of the point, and quite quickly, they the switch on to Farah from Remedy to help deal with this Symmetra, deal with the turrets, and also just be a threat in the air that they can't get to. Yeah, I mean, they've, they're have they bunkered in on the point here. It's it's going to take a lot of effort here from MSXL to dislodge them, especially with that Ant Matrix putting in so much more damage. Ooh, Mithra was looking to get a gutsy res there on Remedy, but not able to solidify it off. They do pull out yet another ultimate, two ultimates, however, at the end of this fight. So even though it was a 6v4, we saw the shield, Blizzard, and <clears throat> Supercharger come out. Of course, you know, end of the map, it doesn't really matter too much. They just wanted to... Like I said, make a point. Hey, you know, gotta buff those ultimates per 10 minutes stats, right? That's a very important stat, you know? And I know that's what I look at when I'm queuing up with teams. Oh, of course, of course. The yeah, only I mean, thing I look at. Burn, very strong push, you know? They use that sim teleport strat really well, but I don't think we're going to see it again <laughs> for the sole reason of, like I said, you can only be surprised once. And if you're either of these teams and you get shocked by a Symmetra strat coming out and your defense is put into disarray by it, I, I think that you need to just go, oh my, we just made a big mistake because you shouldn't be surprised. I do think that, you know, this... I like the switches that I'm seeing here from Burn on their defense. Chunk over to the Symmetra, they're, they're keeping what was working for them. And I really agree with that. I think their bunker comp was really good. But they're swapping merge over to the McCree. I think you they're predicting deal with that far, huh? Yeah, I think they're predicting it. I mean, that's what really opened up MSXL's attack. That's what allowed them to get that first point and later the second point. So I think that's a, a big brain play of kind of predicting what's going to be thrown their way right now. And once again, they've set up this teleporter retreat, which is something that I have grown immensely fond of in these past 10 minutes. <clears throat> oh, I, I'm in love with it. I, I think it's a really well thought out strat for sure. Ooh, really early shield break there for Bishop. Not able to hold his position as they retreat back to point. Windmill able to find and make some space. Hiding there on the edge of the wall so he can't be damaged. Let his shield be charged a little bit. Chunk and Mason both swapping kills. Support for support. But there go the tanks. Oh, and there goes Chunk. <laughs> Poor Tell Remedy. Merch. Hey, you play Symmetra, I play Symmetra, we all play Symmetra. I mean, it's it's scary when you are playing a comp that plays to Symmetra's strength, and then both DPS players are equally as good at Symmetra, so that they're all of a sudden their hitscan player can come in and make your Farah have a lot of pressure on them. That's that's pretty huge. And I mean, I even talked about it, just look. Oh, I think Solno I think looks like he disconnected. It. It might have been a disconnect or a misclick. It looked like an emote there. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. Well, it was a death. That's what it yeah, ended in. It was it not, may have it was been not the good. opening factor here. High Noon does come on board for Merge as he finds Remedy with that. And Chunk finds Loner. No DPS now online for MSXL as Burn looks to stomp their dreams into the dust. Myth are trying to get off to the edge. But Merge is going to say, yeah, I kind of want that old charge. So come back over here, Mercy. <laughs> yeah. Now, like I was trying to say there before, Solnil just kind of stopped playing Overwatch for the, you know, 10 seconds. I mean, this, this, this Symmetric Comp is so strong because even there when they dumped all those resources into breaking Bishop's shields, they just teleported out. And, I mean, I saw both Zarya bubbles get used. Tons of other cooldowns were getting used here by MSXL. And then once they used them all, they're, they're useless because they just teleported back to the point and you got nothing from it. Ooh, sound bigger to start things off, but a shatter to really get things started. Chunk, however, going to be the one finding kills. Big High Noon coming in, but he gets taken up by Majin, who grabs two on that Zarya. High charge, grab ready. Mithra there still with the res available, going to try and grab that onto Loner on that Reaper to bring him back into the fight. He does have the Death Blossom, which will immediately get committed because they need to get this point. But now they're in overtime with no ultimates coming into point B. I'm kind of worried about their success rate here. I'm not even joking. I think Mithra had probably around 1 HP to make that res on Loner happen. And, I mean, that res on Loner, he just threw out that Death Blossom. No questions asked. That was a huge res there for Mithra. Yeah, there we go with the initiation of Beautiful Flashbang coming out from Merge. A lot of weight right now on Remini's shoulders on this Doomfist to make the best of a bad situation. 
Doesn't look like either of them are going to be able to get knocked down to the low ground. Remedy back up, but he's going to get taken out by Soul Nil very quickly. And now it's just Loner trying to jump up that one spot, but... Sorry, Reaper, you don't have those kind of hops. Windmill getting to the point so just barely too late on that Hammond, but it would have been a futile effort anyway. Yeah, I mean, good job there by Burn to stabilize. I think that they just got really unlucky there on, on the first point. I, I think that they thought they had killed that Mercy because Mithra went so, so, so low. And if they had killed the Mercy, then it would have been a 3v2 on the point for them. And they had the Immortality field down. But just because they were unable to secure that kill on Mithra, Loner gets rezzed, and then he just dumps an ultimate into the three of them. And, you know, that's the big problem with a bunker comp, is that you all play close together, and Reapers love it when you play close together. <clears throat> so it's just really unlucky that they weren't able to hold that first point, but they do well to stabilize on second. And Merge and Chunk have been doing a fairly good job of baiting out the cooldowns from Remedy and Loner as they've come in. Um, on these Reapers and Doomfists. But little by little, Lone and Remedy are finding their success. And I think that's where you're going to see MXL kind of shine. As yeah, far they're as starting DPS, to figure DPS it out. Goes. They are. They're, they're starting to figure figure out how to beat this this comp. And that happens over time, right? The more you play against something, the better you are going to, you, the better you should get at countering it, right? So it's nice to see that they're starting to make the adjustments. I don't know how well the sim teleport is going to work here. I think I think MSXL is ready for it. Beautiful job using the ice wall to allow them to get all the way up. They are ready for it, so they are going to come into the point <clears throat> into a fight that is prepared to happen, but it's not going to matter as Maya gets the early kill there onto Loner. And Myth are going to bring him back into the fight, but Soul No taking out Majin, and now it is a 5v6 on the point. Maywall mitigating a lot of damage on the point right now as Loner gets taken out by that <coughs> accretion from Soul No. That Meteor able to uh, dislodge Bastion from his turret form as they force Burn off of the point. And there's a beautiful little halt there. Oh no, it's not a halt, it's a. It's the rock onto Red Panda knocking him off of the map there. Yeah. I think that Burn should be good enough here to to cap this. I mean, like I said, I, I wasn't expecting MSL to get MSXL to get shocked there by the teleport, and I just don't think they prepped properly for it. I mean, Loner ended up just outside of the immortality field, which allowed him to get picked. That forces Mitra to use the res and also puts Loner in a, a very sketchy position anyways because he's not set up and he's not pumping in damage for that time period that he was dead. So I just think that that misplay there of not getting that immortality field down just right really kind of led to a snowball of cooldowns that had to be used. And by that point, the advantage is so firmly in the favor of Burn that it's hard to recover. I've got to agree with you there. And recovery is something that you've got to worry about here as 33% is all that they need as they shovel themselves into a small little corner there. And a lot of kills coming in for Loner and Remedy as they begin to make up for what I would say is a goof on point A. And Piper, I think that that's a, that's a pretty good fight there. You know, 65, 63% to the damage yeah. ultimate, 77, 78 for the that's tanks. A, that's a good stabilization fight, and it's going to allow them to build up that occult, ult, cult, the alt economy going forward that they require to win. Mithra is going to get that Valkyrie, and then the tank ultimates are going to come online, and the DPS alt shortly thereafter, and that's going to allow them to kind of match the ultimates that are on Burn's side here. So they may be able to stabilize this round, and might be able to extend it. I think Remedy swap onto Farah, very very strong choice, and Loner as well onto the McCree. That flashbang just provides a little bit more of a threat to Chunk and forces him to play less aggressive, because if he strays too far on a flank from his tank line or too far away from his shield, he's going to be oh, in no. a lot of trouble. <gasps> That's a huge oh, mistake. Bishop with a little That's bit of a huge. misstep. Four missteps if you're counting each leg. Orissa falling off of the high ground there, getting taken out early by Loner, but Merge is looking to put this fight back into the playbook. But Whole Hog says no thank you right there. Mason going to go ahead and take out the rest of the team. They'll take out that teleporter in the fight, and they still have a few ultimates on board and that, that Pharah ultimate right next door. You know what? In terms of ultimate economy, I would consider winning a fight with Whole Hog. That's not a bad trade-off. It buys you more time. Allows you to build up the rest of your ultimates that you were getting close to. I mean, Red Panda almost has that Ant Matrix now. That's going to be absolutely huge. 
And I think it really is just going to come down to who can use their ultimates better here. Both teams having fairly similar alt economies. I will say though, the Chunks Symmetra shield is going to be absolutely crucial when it comes time for the next ultimates. They're going to use it to protect their McCree, and Merge is going to find a couple of kills with that as Remedy gets one kill on the Bishop, not able to find much else with that Pharaoh ultimate. Everybody very low. Loner, the only one still alive, but not able to touch so low on that McCree. And we will see Burn take Hanamura and put this fight to a 1 1 map score. That was a really good. Good fight there coming out from Burn. Merge there on the high ground. He had that McCree set up. Got the double. And then from there, they teleported over. The perfect second that Remedy was looking for that barrage. And he was only able to catch Bishop with it. So that really allowed the rest of the team to escape unharmed and win the fight. Because they don't get that teleport off at the last second. Remedy was going to have a pretty big far alt there that maybe could have stabilized the fight for them. And that's, that's the second time we've seen that teleporter just be a huge game changer when it comes to um, some of the more impactful ultimates in the game. You know, the Reinhardt Shatter, the, the Far Ultimate, <clears throat> the Barrage. Yeah, I mean, we've seen lots of Symmetra, and it's been played very well, I have to say. So, looks like, you know, Burn, Burn and MSXL, we knew that this was going to be, as you said, a Barn Burn. This is going to be, you know, fight until the last bell dings. But if you could point out two things that you saw burn change from Elios to Hanamura that uh that really made a huge impact in that last fight, what do you think you would highlight? I think I think the biggest the biggest point was that they just had a better game plan going into it. Uh, I think that they knew better what they wanted to do on Hanamura, and when they were faced with when they were faced with you know a fight not going their way they were better able to adapt to those things and with those adaptions that's what kind of allowed them to proceed to victory i mean we saw remedy pull out uh for instance when remedy pulled out that fara and allowed them to win that that fight to get them second first and second point really we saw merge swap over to that mccree and chunk still be able to play that symmetra which i think was a huge swap and i think they just used their cooldowns better I you know I think that's a big thing. Using your cooldowns better is gonna obviously allow your team a lot more success. And I think Burn did a better job using their cooldowns in this second map. And I think that's why they came out on top, coupled with their better game plan. Well, there you have it, folks. Burn and Microsoft Excelsior are battling it out right now. They will be going over to King's Row for their next map, I believe. <clears throat> I, I think I think that's our next map. Yep, we're going to be going to King's Row for the next map. So sit tight, fire up that chat, and we will be right back after this break.
Alrighty, and now we're going off to personally my favorite map, King's Row. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Steidel24, and my wonderful co-caster today, Piper, are you ready for King's Row? Oh, you know I am ready. You can't be in NA and not love King's Row. There's a reason that they call it Scrim's Row. You know when you get those, like, NA Scrim bingo cards? Ki playing, King's <laughs> Row, playing King's Row is always the, like free to take space because it always happens so i'm very excited for this map i i personally think it's it's probably one of the best hybrid maps if not the best hybrid map and i'm really excited to see what these two teams do on it because it's been such a close matchup so what do you think we've seen merge take on a lot or wear a lot of hats merge and remedy have both been wearing a lot of hats on the dps fronts we've seen them play at the symmetras the mccrees the doomfists the faras everything what do you expect out of these two guys coming into this map i mean it's really hard to say because it's going to be really dependent on not just what their tank line plays but also what the other tank line is because i think the last two maps that's really determined the dps that have been played i mean we saw remedy there on on well swap over to that doomfist which worked really well into the Arisa sigma that was being run by burn and then on the flip side i mean we saw we saw you know this this uh symmetra swaps that's the character i'm looking for my brain wasn't working the symmetra <laughs> stops which is swaps which was working really well into the the shield comps because both teams were playing very heavy uh shield comps with that sigma orisa we saw it coming up from both sides remedy again swapping heroes based on the tank line so i think it's going to be really dependent here but i wouldn't be surprised if we saw I mean, there was so much success on it earlier. I wouldn't be surprised to see more Symmetra. But I also wouldn't be shocked by a Doomfist or something like that. But apparently, I'm going to be completely wrong. We're going to see something completely different, except for the Symmetra of Merge. Double Sniper Defense here. That's interesting, for sure. I, I just don't know how well Double Sniper is going to work against the Double Shield comp. I mean, obviously... Hanzo's Storm Arrow has a fair amount of shield break, but I just don't think it has enough. And how is Remedy going to be able to get in there and get some picks? I don't really see this double sniper working out that well, so it's really going to rely on Windmill and Mazen to do a lot of the shield break if they're going to want to allow Remedy any sort of ability to make any sorts of plays. Let's see how they're setting up their sight lines. It looks like we're going to have Remedy sitting back in the stairwell, keeping an eye on the upper door as things come in, and... Loner's just going to be right there, directly on the point. There goes the Sim Teleport up onto the high ground. There goes all the space that Remedy wants to be able to use as they initiate onto the point. There goes the Orisa Shield getting broken fairly quickly, so they're going to throw the Sigma Shield out there. The benefit of that double shield composition is Solnul opens the door here with a kill onto Mason. Right there in the very beginning, Remedy getting zoned out by Chunk and Solno in the back of the fight, not able to find any kills there. Only two people, one person left, and that's Mason as he gets taken out as well. So pretty systematically, uh, looks like it was kind of a step one, step ten, A to Z for uh, MSXL there as they yeah, came into the that was a That oh, was sorry, a very strong... Yeah, they, they swapped sides the on us. They swapped sides on us just to confuse the casters and everybody at home. But yeah, that was a very strong fight there for Burn. They did a really good job there on attack. Merge did an excellent job. And I think, honestly, that would have been a faster roll if Chunk didn't uh, wall them off of the, the other team off the point. I think if his wall didn't happen, they probably would have rolled them faster. I think the really unfortunate thing there, though, for MSXL, Remedy got on this sick flank, and he had the back line of Burn completely exposed. And then he focused on shield break, not on picking off the squishies. So a little bit of a mental lapse of judgment there from him for target acquisition. But if that doesn't happen, I think it's a different round. And speaking of a little bit of a lapse, over positioning there, I would say, on the on the MSXL side as they try to defend at the chokehold. But because they're running this double sniper, they're just not able to get the presence on the cart when they start this brawl with their Reinhardt. 
So I would oh, expect to see switches coming through hundred percent. They need to make a swap here. Remedy needs to swap off that middle or middle widow because it's just too narrow here on this middle stage of King's Row and they're not going to be able to get any value. This swap onto the Doomfist, I like. I think this is a good swap, and Remedy has proven that they can play Doomfist, so I'm very excited to see this happen. <clears throat> yeah, the Doomfist coming in. There's a lot of spots here on King's Row where you can get that 125 damage seismic slam, but a Nana boosted Symmetra is not what you want to see in your face right now as Merge decides to put himself into contention for the MVP vote here on this map proving that when it comes time for day one season one if you're playing burn you better have something ready for this symmetra yeah the merges symmetra is very strong right now i think big shout out there chunk had a really good wall there walling off windmill and that really allowed them to open it up here the other thing that's going to suck here for remedy on the doomfist is those sim turrets are going to slow him down and make it a lot harder for him to combo. And I can already see Merge. All the turrets are back where Big Muzzy is playing. But that is a fat shatter onto the back line of Burn. Too bad there's not a lot of follow-up damage for anything to happen there. Beautiful wall there by Chunk to make sure that nothing happens. Windmill, however, getting those bubbles from his Zarya to keep himself into the fight. There goes the Sigma ultimate, the grab flex, looking to grab a couple of kills. It's not going to find anything as the Amplification Matrix comes out to try and save the tanks, but it comes out just a little bit too late. Loner, however, going to be able to use that Amplification Matrix to grab himself two kills and a high noon onto Big Muzzy. Loner absolutely popped off there. I mean, he got pocketed really hard there from Zaba, got the Amplification Matrix, and then it just came down to him hitting his shots, and that's exactly what he did. Kudos to him. That was a very impressive performance of technical skill, hitting all those shots to get those kills. Ooh, speaking of technical performance, my favorite thing about watching good Doomfist players is the sneaky, sneaky plays. Take a look there. Remedy hiding up there on the high ground, waiting for those supports. But while he's waiting, Bishop goes ahead and opens things up. He gets the shot on a big muzzy, but does not get any wall or any kill shot, so it's a pretty easy finish there as Merge just melts him down with that beam. And now I'm we're surprised. gonna see a lot of space get taken. Yeah, I'm su they'll have another contest here. I was just really surprised to see Remedy go for the punch as opposed to a slam there and then try to use his punch to escape. Me as well, I expect them to use that because that is a 125 spot if you use it right with the uppercut. Immortality on the field going to get taken out by Remedy's Meteor Strike as he gets frozen on the point. This will not be stopping Burn as they continue to show MSXL that things have changed since Season 1. We are no longer going to allow you to top the leaderboard and win these fights. And oh, a charge almost knocking Chunk off of the fight as Windmill comes in with the shatter that might change the game. They might be able to bring this back. Remedy gets the kill on the Bishop, evening it up. No longer are there any main tank on the point right now for Burns. Soul Mole able to make it back, however, into the fight as Remedy makes it difficult for anybody to get close to this payload. The Sigma comes in with that grab flex and grabs two. And wow. The Sigma ultimate is so powerful on these maps, not to mention the fact that you can lift people above the contest period. <laughs> That's... Just, oh. That must be, like, tilting to get pulled off the point as it gets pulled. I, I'm pretty sure I would get tilted. Not that that's hard to do. But, man, that's... Gravatic Flux is a very strong ultimate, especially in those situations where you know everybody's going to be on the point. I mean, what else could MSXL do there? They had to touch the point. They couldn't escape that ultimate. So it, it was pretty much preordained. The minute that alt went out, they were going to take the point. Now, silver lining to that fight, they did take what would have been a 3 minute and 50 something second time bank if um, when I thought they were going to take it had happened, but thanks to that huge shatter from Windmill along with the charge, they were able to make that down to a 2 minute and 40 second time bank, which is much more manageable now that you know that they're going to use that symmetric. Yeah, and we're going to see... Uh, Merge actually swap off his Symmetra onto his McCree, and Chunk is going to show us his Symmetra again. And it looks like they're probably going to try the same bunker strategy that they tried before. Now, I'm not sure how well this is going to work here on King's Row, because to me, the reason that their Hanamura strat worked so well was because they would play that initial choke, and then they were able to teleport back, 
and that forced MSXL to use a lot of their resources to get through the choke, like I said, and then they had to use even more to reach the point. But here, you're not going to be able to hold right that first choke where the wall is anyways, so your teleport back to point isn't going to get as much value, I don't think, on this particular map. Let's see how they're going to be using that teleport. Beautiful halt coming in to allow every member to get mixed up in this fight as they transition around to the hotel. Teleporter comes out but is immediately taken down by Burns. So MSXL now trapped in this hotel, this tiny space. Merge going to go ahead and take advantage of that and take Remedy out of the fight. Now they don't even have the chance to get the teleporter back up. Loner going to try and get out and do something but Merge once again grabbing himself a couple of kills as he flanks around to the backside looking to get get a little cheeky there grab himself a couple of extra kills kind of pad that that stats that stat sheet but they will get the defense i'm i'm not a fan of this dps combo that we're seeing Ooh. big pick there by windmill but i wasn't a fan of that dps combo that we were seeing from msxl i think that they could have played some better combos like a reaper may for the sole reason that you need one of your dps to kind of be your carry and that's going to be your reaper and the other dps needs to help enable the carry and I just I don't see that happening right now nope but I do see there's an amplification matrix coming out Mason however gonna be making the best of a bad situation allowing for a couple of really good kills and remedy coming in huge hasn't been in the kill feed that much throughout this fight but he has been peppering in damage from this uh, from this high ground that entire time allowing for them to kind of push into the fight making burn uncomfortable on their defense yeah, I think Remedy swap onto Hanzo was a good swap. I was talking more about that Symmetra pick they had initially. And and on that topic, I mean, Loner, because Remedy's able to sit on the flanks and pepper and arrows, one or, either one or the other of them is going to be able to provide that carry. All the other one has to do is not feed and at least trade out a kill, and then it's up to the carry. In this instance, Loner can either get in there and be the carry, and Remedy's going to be flanking just drawing resources away, as in shields or tank uh, attention. Or Loner's going to be brawling with their tanks, forcing out cooldowns, and then Remedy can just get sick headshots from behind. But Mer Merge is going to put a stop to that. Speaking of sick headshots from behind, Loner, however, going to be able to get one with that Reaper ultimate. Windmill taking out that uh, immortality field just in the nick of time. There goes the Graviton, gra 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 Gravatic Flux coming in from Soul Null to kind of put an end to this fight, put an end to this push and push them back to spawn, and Merge decides to take his entire team with him into the kill feed. My lord, a nanoed Hanzo is apparently very scary. I think the really unfortunate thing with that that fight, though, is that Solno pulls out that Gravatic Flux right as Flamia hits a huge ante. And if that Gravatic Flux doesn't stop the push that MSXL had, they would have probably rolled because it's so hard you, you can't heal through an ante. Amplification Matrix is put out, but it's put out quite far away from the rest of the team as they get pushed behind this corner. They're not able to use it, and the dragons get used in tandem with the Gravatic Flux. So as they're being brought down from the Gravatic Flux, they're being brought into those dragons. Yeah, that combination is very, very similar to the Graviton Surge dragon combo in that you're not able, once you get thrown up into the air, you really don't move a whole lot. And if you time the dragon right, as they come down, they're pretty much forced right into your dragon, and there's no escaping from the middle of Dragon Strike. No, it's a pretty, it's a pretty deadly combination there. It's like being dropped into a minefield of Hammond's mines. It's my least favorite way to die right now in Overwatch. Second least favorite way to die, freaking Hanzo. Merge gonna find himself a couple of kills right there using those dragons. He does find Loner without the Wraith form. So with 1.57 meters left to push, they are not able to grab this second point burn, burning off more time on the clock as the nano boosted windmill tries to get another Gravatic Flux here because if they can get that Gravatic Flux up in the air, they can get the team off of the point just long enough to move it forward. But more Merge has something else to say about that as a nano boosted Hanzo trying to get those dragons up. He does find a couple of kills and does get taken out himself. And it's now a 4v5 when it comes into this situation. Mason trying to keep things alive, and they don't want to lose the momentum, but it looks like it's already been lost. Yeah, spawn advantage here goes to burn, so of course MSXL are going to have to back off and reset once the kill feed started to be even with the trades, Simple for the simple reason that they're going to get their reinforcements back first, so it's hard to continue on that fight. 
the way it was happening. So all you need to do now is reset. Windmill is going to have that Gravatic Flux. Remedy has the Dragons. That's the combo that worked well for them last time. So as long as they make it work again, they should have no issues here. They do have a Teleporter to kind of retreat to the high ground if they need be. Burn, of course. Burn is going to go ahead and use that shield. The gra gra Gravatic Flux is going to go ahead and get put down onto the point. Not able to find anybody in the Immortality Field put out just in the nick of time. As Merge finds Loner. They're going to be evening things out right now in a 4v4. Remedy getting mighty low on that Hanzo as the Dragons come out looking to find Mason. But they're a little bit too far, and the rest of the team is able to kind of survive. But huge anti-nade coming in from Muzzy, followed by a huge anti-nade from Flame. Only issue is, Flame didn't have anyone to follow up on that nade. Both these Anas have been out of their minds with these nades. I mean, the fight could have went either way there because of the antis that were coming out there. And that's really the hallmark of any good team. The support line of any team is absolutely crucial because they're the people that are enabling your DPS and enabling your tank line. So the fact that these supports are really showing their skill just shows how good these teams are going to be for the rest of the season here. We've only got 17 seconds left here, Piper, and it seems to me like MSXL can't necessarily decide on how it is they want to take this final fight. They have the Death Blossom. They have the Supercharger, but the Gravatic Flex is not in their favor. They are able to get the Immortality Field out and survive through Soul Null's ult there, but it's going to be Loner getting taken out really quickly during that Death Blossom. They're able to even things out right now in a 5v4. As long as they can continue to win one for one, they'll win the fight. The Amplification Matrix from Maya able to help out as Solnil takes out that Supercharger. But Flame, Windmill, Remedy, they're all on the kill feed as they push this payload just a little bit further. I have to say, I, I must have missed something crucial because I thought that Burn had that. It looked initially like they had the picks, and it looked like their alt combos were going to put... MSXL on the back foot, especially when I saw that amplification matrix come out. I thought there's no way that Mason and Windmill can keep their shields up with all that pressure, but they did it and they found the kills and they made it happen. So kudos to them for making it happen. Now crunch time is enacted. Dragons come out to separate the healers from the rest of the team. They do so successfully and get Maya as the accretion gets merged. Windmill putting himself into the kill feed big as Remedy takes out that immortality field to allow for the rest of the team to just cruise on through. So it's going to be big. There goes Soul Null there with a big stagger. And this is absolutely crucial. With 45 seconds left, they have been able to disassemble <clears throat> Burn in every fight and keep their ultimates on board. Oh, and they might... They need to finish with time here. They need to use their ultimates ASAP. And there goes the Coalescence to try and put the final nail into the coffin. And the Gravatic oh my. Windmill is there to push it through the rest of the way. They weren't ready for it. They, they thought that it was going to be up to Bishop there to touch. And Bishop got melted so quickly. I don't think he actually tagged the point enough to give it a bit of a delay for the remaining members of Burn to get on there. He got there a little bit too early. Yeah, he was a little too early, and he got melted too quickly. The members of Burn were just out of position. They weren't ready to touch with him to try to contest that. And now that's going to give MS MSXL a chance here on the attack. And not to not to mention the fact that that gr gravatic fl flux there. You know that gravatic flux is that's that's a hard thing to say when you're when you're speaking quickly. But that we need to flux. We need a new name for it. I'm gonna call it the flux. That's it needs it a new name. The Flux? Like, flex the Flux, man. All right. I The the Flexing Flux, whatever. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Lines. But anyway, Windmill's Flux there at the very end uh, caught uh, Merge, who really, realistically, is the only hero on Burn that would have been able to get to the point with that agility, having that, you know, that leap with the Hanzo. But since he was stuck in that Flux, he wasn't able to do anything. Yeah, I mean, Chunk was also really close to touching there. And I, I think it really just came down to Bishop being a split second too early. Like, I, if Bishop survives a split second longer, I think he contests, gets enough of a delay that they're able to contest. And, I mean, once you start delaying with that spawn advantage, you know, anything can happen, really. Well, let's see what we've got here. So, coming into this next defense, we're going to have to go the map one more time. You guys know how this works. But we will get to see MXL attack immediately again. They're only going to have one minute to 
get as much as they can get done before things go into overtime. If they go into overtime after taking the point, they will have to stick to that payload the entire time, and that's something that we've seen MXL kind of have some difficulty with. Yeah, I mean, one minute's a, a tall order. That's that's a lot, especially when you compare the time bank on the side of Burn. Burn, they got a few more seconds because MSXL finished under that minute time time mark. So, I mean, a three-minute time bank versus a minute time bank, that's a huge advantage, especially when once you start pushing the point through. You're not going to get any extra time. It's just going to be an overtime the whole time. So one lost fight could really, you know, spell disaster for you. We'll see what these teams are able to do. We do have a bit of a pause, probably a technical difficulty on one end or the other, but that's all right because we're going to get back to the action as soon as possible. The score right now is one to one, Piper. And if things go the way that they've been going, we're, we might see Burn put this into a 2 1, and that puts them on Havana for what could be their winning point. How do you see Burn faring on Havana? After, after what you've seen here on King's Row? I, I will have to personally admit, uh, I haven't looked much into Havana and really how it played since it got uh, introduced to the map pool. So if anything, I'm going to be interested to see what Burn is going to do so that they can teach me what should happen on that map. But I wouldn't be surprised if we've seen Symmetra. I think that Burn is kind of clued into that Sim is their winning formula right now. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And... I, I could see them with some creative strats and some creative ways to make it happen. The only thing that I'm unsure about is that with a Symmetra, especially on an escort map, you f I feel like you kind of lose some of the value that you get from her teleporter and also her turrets simply because the payload's always moving. The, the spot that the payload is at is always going to change. So it's a little bit harder for you to make use of good teleport spots because where you're teleporting to or where your turret's set up isn't always going to be the most ideal spot based on the payload's location. All righty, folks. We're going to figure out this technical difficulty real quick, but while, before then, we're going to go ahead and go to a short break, and we'll be right back.
and we're back and ready for the action, ladies and gentlemen. You are tuning in to Burn versus MSXL. That's Microsoft Excelsior here at the Outlet Tournament preseason day two. I am Steidel24 and my partner in crime today, Piper. You ready for, for round two of King's Row? I am incredibly ready. We've had such a close match here. It's currently 1-1. Obviously, we saw Ilios going the way of MSXL and then Hanamura going the way of Burn. And we're in round three right now, both sides having pushed it all the way. So we're going to see who's going to be able to come out and win it here. Composition's looking relatively the same. It looks like Burn's going to be running the exact same composition on the defense. And then our offensive... They are going to be going with the Reaper off of the bat. And they're going to keep the Hanzo this time. They're not going to run that Symmetra. I think the Hanzo is a better choice than the Sim for sure. Zaba's got to watch out here. He is anti and very low. But they're going to be able to stabilize here. And I like that Chunk has a car wash set up in the hotel. Just for funsies. It's a smart idea in case they want to try to get an interesting flank. They have to be careful though. Shield management is becoming an issue. As Solnal does not have... Of that much health left on his shield. It's almost broken already. Chunk and Sonal, however, are able to come up with those first two kills, and this is huge. There's only 17 seconds left. They don't have time for a second fight. Oh my. This is not this is not good for MSXL. That is for sure. Somebody needs to make a swap to get to that point. Because right now there's only closest flame. I don't know. So flame's gonna flame get it. Able to touch. And I don't think flame's gonna be around for long though. No, nope. windmill as well. An outdated form of technology, not able to stay on the point for long. No, he's actually able to stay alive for quite a, quite a long time as the dragons come out from merge to try and put the final nail into the coffin here as Chunk gets windmill out of the fight. A 2v6 on the point. This is all but over as Zaba tries to dance around a lamp post on that Baptiste. Flame coming back on the Lucio, immediately hit with an anti nade. And we are going to have to see Burn take, take to the attack. And MSXL has quite an uphill battle ahead of them. Yeah, they really do have it all to do right now. I mean, a three-minute time bank is an incredibly good time bank for this first point. So it's really going to come down to, is MXX, MSXL going to be able to hang on here? And I don't know. Burn looked very strong these last two maps. And I think, you know, even the mental side of it has to be getting to you by this point. That Symmetra must be so annoying and so tilting. I know for me, when I play comp, Symmetra tilts me out of this world, so I can't imagine how but how frustrating it must be that it's not only one Symmetra, but both DPSs on Burn are playing Symmetra incredibly well and making your life difficult. So coming out of attack, we're gonna they are gonna put Merge onto the Widowmaker, and this is such a smart choice. On, on I love when the second attack teams use a Widowmaker. Um, on the attack because you can just sit him off the point you know the other team has to be on the point so you can just sit off protected by yourself and just wait for that one squishy to step behind the shield or you know that far out to oh, get a little too high in the sky a hundred percent it's it's really as an attacking widow you have such a great advantage because if there's nobody else to contest you unfortunately merge is going to swap off but if nobody else is going to contest you you get to determine the angles. It's such a huge advantage. So let's see what Merge is able to do. Not going to be using the Widowmaker. Going to be using the Hanzo. But that's pretty much the same the same effect. And we see Burn use that Symmetra Teleport trick again. Going up onto the high ground. And, initi and immediately initiating onto the low. They aren't going to be able to give themselves a lot of presence on the point. You see a lot, a little bit of a dance there going on from MSXL. As two of their members, both of their DPS get taken out. There goes Zaba and Flame. Now it's just a couple of tanks, and 33% is the goal. Windmill getting taken out by Solno's accretion there at the very end. And with 2 minutes and 27 seconds left in their time bank, we're going to see Burn take the lead in this matchup. Yeah, I think MSXL just hasn't figured out a way to adapt yet. Remedy on the far just hasn't had enough impact. And because of that, they're just they're not able to really ha affect anything that's happening. I mean, you know, Loner's doing his best on the McCree. Loner's doing his best on the Hanzo, but it's hard with the two shields in front of him, so he's not able to affect a lot. And Remedy's far also just not f finding the effect with that DPS that they need. And so, of course, the, the shield war is going to go the way of Burn because they have Symmetra, that huge shield break. And 
He just needs to figure out some way to adapt to this Symmetra comp because it's really, really been kicking him in the behind. And speaking of kicking him in the behind, we're going to a map that I have seen a lot of teams struggle with. Uh, we're going to be going to, ha to Havana next. Um, and I have seen a lot of teams get kind of... I, I don't want to say full held, because as a payload map, it's very rare that you actually get a full hold. But... You know, it's it's not uncommon to see teams kind of bully the attacking team back into their spawn room once that payload takes that first corner. Yeah, I mean, like I as to my own self admission, I don't have that much experience with this map, but this map is very strange to me. It's it reminds me a lot of Hollywood in that the three points are very different, right? That opening phase reminds me a lot of the streets phase of King's Row. But then you get into that second point, which is very congested and a lot more close quarters. And then it opens back up again, you know, astronomically on that third point. So you go through a lot of a lot of phases. So I think you really need to have a strong game plan coming into this. And I'll be interested to see what the teams decide to do. And I would not be shocked to see Burn picking up a Symmetra here as well. Oh, not at all. I, I, I'd, I'd be, I'd actually be surprised if either Merge or Chunk, um, didn't play the Symmetra. We do have some swaps coming in as well. Looks like Mithra is going to be coming in for Flame, and Red Panda coming in for Zava. So they're going to be swapping out their support line here. Microsoft Excel are going to be swapping out their support line. Um. And that's one thing that we've seen Microsoft Excelsior do. They really are taking advantage of the preseason play, getting as much play time with as many different players as they can. So how, that has to be affecting their win percentage right now because they're shifting people around so much. I mean, perhaps. And obviously this is the preseason, so teams aren't going to be letting out their best strats and teams aren't going to be playing their strongest rosters right now. Or, you know they might be trying to figure out what the strongest roster is and who their best performers are going to be. And to do that, you need to give everybody equal playing time to be able to say that, yes, you're better or no, you're not better. And to do that, you need a, a data, data pool to collect from. So that's why we're seeing a lot of these swaps, I believe. But I, you, know, you also got to think, are, are, maybe they're treating this a little bit differently than a regular matchup. Maybe not 100% uh, playing to win and maybe just focusing more on developing their player base. But I mean, for me, I like to live my life trying to win at every opportunity. And I mean, I would be trying to play to come out to win here. Well, that might be what's happening now. We're seeing Surfy being brought in on the DPS front. Surfy has not played any of the maps today. I don't believe this is the first map he's been put into the active roster. So we're going to see what he's able to bring to the table. Uh, I would be surprised if uh, Surfy is, is playing DPS. Uh, as far as I know, he he is a tank player. But maybe they've got some sneaky strategy going on, or you know, he's got some sort of uh, big secret uh, you know, one trick that he's going to pop on us. But from what I do remember of playing with him is that Surfy was a very, very good Orisa player. Like, well, I, I was about and, to say, I think we might be seeing Mason um, come off of the Orisa and onto the Genji. Yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't be shocked for that. And I mean, having a really good Orisa one trick in this meta is going to be very helpful. You know, no, having somebody that knows those uh, shield cooldowns well and is able to cycle them very well, throw it, you know, manage their fortify well and the halts, that's going to be big. And ha just having that technical proficiency on a hero that's so really is like the cornerstone main tank right now, probably might give MSXL a huge advantage. Well, we are going to be figuring out which team has the advantage very quickly. Just a reminder, as you can see on your screen, um, or as you just saw on your screen, MSXL able to win Elios, but both Hanamura and King's Row going to the side of Burn, as Burn looks to sh prove to Microsoft Excelsior, the Season 1 champions, that this is no longer the outlet that they used to run. There's some competition now. Yeah, there's a fair amount of competition. I mean, Burn is really showing off. 
how strong they are. And I mean, even in Owlet Season 2, there were so many strong teams. There was Boosted, by the way, who was near undefeated until they got bested in the finals. So, First team I ever cast in the Owlet. Yeah, it's... It is, you know, I think this year Owlet Majors is going to be the Wild West. I think we've got lots of very evenly matched teams heading into this. And really, it's going to be anybody's game. And you're really going to have to watch throughout the season to see who's going to take that top spot. Not to mention, and this is one of the things that I really do love about the introduction of the 2 2 2 um, roll queue, the roll lock that we have now, is that. I feel like last season, in every sense, in every tier almost of Overwatch, it, the question was, who could play this singular meta composition better than anybody else? But now, we see different compositions. So if you are somebody who can't play Brig very well, but you are one of the best Zenyatta's on the on the ladder, or in, in Owlet, now you have a have the chance to build that composition around that hero and bring it into the mix so i'm really excited to see what all of these teams are going to bring to the table i i really am too i think right now the meta's not in the best of places just for the simple reason that a lot of hero balance is just a little bit off right now because of the fact that so many heroes got nerfs that were specific to goats oh, i mean three three yeah yeah or three three in general so i think think that right now the meta i personally love the goats meta but i think that the meta is more friendly to variety right now but a hundred percent definitely you know it's not in its perfect place and i wouldn't be surprised if blizzard makes a lot of changes uh after the overwatch league season comes to a close yep, and there, there it is just like we called it surfy onto the orissa mason onto the dps gonna be playing the farah here in this match does get taken out by merge they have the res so it'll be right back into the end of the fight but that is not the same case for chunk on the other end of the spectrum a bit of a brawly fight on the point happening now as bishop and soul try to cycle out those shields as best they can but the momentum is on <clears throat> is definitely in favor of msxl right now as they're able to walk up onto bishop and burn Soul getting quite back now as the amplification matrix comes out from Maya onto the point there. They're still able to get kills, however. MSXL not giving up on this push. They don't want to lose any momentum throughout the rest of this fight. Yeah, and I think uh, once they lost that first pick, you know, it's really hard for Burn to hang on and hold that fight. And I think the big point here is that Mazen swapping over to that Farah has freed up Remedy to play that Hanzo. And I think Remedy is doing a fairly good job of using his Hanzo to put a lot of pressure on as well. And I think Mazen is looking very comfortable on the Farah as well. So I think this DPS swap was good, you know, for both DPS players to really be able to shine a little bit more here for MSXL. We'll see what uh, we'll see what Mason's able to do here in this kind of enclosed area. He gets really high up, tries to pop that barrage out, gets Bishop. I wouldn't be surprised to see a switch from Mason as this inside area is kind of difficult to run that Rocket Queen. Merge able to get that kill. Looking for the kill on the Mithra, on the Mercy, not able to secure it. However, so the res does get off, and what a gutsy resurrect there from Mithra. Getting Mason back into the fight, but Mason not respecting the life he was given. I think, unfortunately, I think, unfortunately, there though Mithra gets off this really sick res, the problem is is that Mazen's in a bad position and can't do anything with it anyways. So, you know, that res is more or less, I don't want to say wasted, but it could have been better used if saved and used to, you know, help get the next pick up online. I agree. It was, it was a flashy res for sure. But uh, all of Mason's cooldowns, yeah, practically still down, so he wasn't able to use his concussive blast or his jump jets or anything. And so I it mean, wasn't very difficult for when the McCree to take was him right out. there. Yeah, the McCree was right there. I think that, you know, practically, that in practical application, that res wasn't the best, if not a very flashy one. Alrighty, so now here on the inside, you didn't see Chunk really get a lot of value on that first point, but now. Chunk able to get lots of value once we get into this indoor area. There goes the high noon from behind. There goes the Sigma as well. Nothing in the grab flex or the Deadeye. So both ults falling pretty much useless. But the kill feed, however, is still pretty blue. Grab flex coming from the opposite side. Windmill 
able to find Mayfield, but not able to get the kill on the male <clears throat> there. So Mithra going to be the big one there, bringing Red Panda back into the fight so that they have both supports still online. It's the second res. This time, used a little bit better, a little bit more crucially. Mortality Field going to be keeping MSXL up as the fight goes on. Mason taking a nap on the high ground as Maya and Remedy get a little bit close to getting that kill. Mason will fall to Bishop and they will hold once again. That was a nutty sleep. That was a nutty sleep. Just say, that was nutty. Uh, I'm, I don't think they're going to get much value out of the Farah here. It's just that roof overhang makes it too congested for Mason to do a lot of work. And that's kind of what I talked about earlier. This map's really... The points are very, very different from each other, you know? They go from kind of semi-open to very closed to very open. So y you get different value out of different heroes, you know, depending on what point you're on. And I think Farah just does not get value on this second point. And the fact that you're not able to roll through it means that Mazen can't, you know, kind of just breeze through this point, not really doing a lot, and uh, get that value back on the third point, and is just kind of losing value right now because they're stuck. I agree, and uh, he's tried, he's been trying to position for this barrage now for a couple of fights, and one of the difficult things about that is he doesn't have any protection with him when he goes for it. He doesn't have a diva to defense matrix him. He doesn't have a Zarya bubble or anything. And because of the way that the chokes on this specific point of the map are formed and how open it is on the inside, you know, confined, but open, it's it's very difficult not to telegraph the fact that you're about to barrage the team. Now, that's a big pick right there, though. And a big barrage coming in from Mason getting two. You know, Cassus Curse is a real thing, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yep, yeah. It's like the minute... Oh, but Chunk's finding kills now. He might have turned it around, my lord. And if well, Surfy doesn't get time. support, yeah, Surfy's gonna have to run back for support right now. The payload moving just a little bit further, but they've they've pushed it farther than this already, so they're not really gaining anything at this moment. There goes the immortality field into the back. Mason finally back into the fight now on this far, and nobody dealing with the turrets that are high up in the air. And Mithra gonna get taken out because of them. Chunk, Chunk cause... doesn't even need to be alive to get kills. Beauty of the Symmetra as Burn continues to hold strong on their defense, and MSXL finding a very difficult time here getting into the back line of Burn. They're, they're able to get, you know, a pick here and there, but when it comes to taking out Maya and taking out Big Muzzy, they're having a little bit of difficulty. I thought they had it there with that big barrage, but Chunk came in big for his team, found some crucial kills, and forced Surfy to actually fall back when Chunk and Bishop got split by that dragon and allowed that allowed Burn to regroup, really. Ooh, there's a big switch. Remedy onto that, or sorry, uh, Mason onto that uh, Symmetra. Not able to find anything though. Supercharger's getting popped by both sides of this fight. Bishop and Solon, however, the ones that are coming out on top. Surfy on the Orisa finally takes out Chunk, so that Symmetra threat taken out of the fight as Mithra goes Battle Mercy onto Maya Field, taking him out of this fight completely. Mason taking out Bishop. This is what you want to see. Now it's just Big Muzzy and uh, Merge there on the high ground. Big Muzzy going to try and get a little bit more of a stall as the Deadeye comes online. Deadeye, however, not able to find anybody. They're just hide behind the stairs to keep themselves safe. I don't know if you can really go for this. You're going to be very staggered here coming out. Interesting use of that ultimate. Want to make sure that that McCree can't get anything and that he's dead for sure? Use a grab flex on him. That's what Windmill says. Chunk gonna take Remedy out of the fight. And there goes the Immortality Field taking out super quickly by Chunk. The Nano Boost is Symmetra. That's dangerous. That's lethal. Wow. So staggered or not, able to come back, contest, and stop the point to take. I think the big mistake there was the fact that Windmill went for that flux onto Merge. I mean, Merge, yeah, he's floating, but... Like, Windmill was way out there in the back line by himself, trying to get Merge, and that allowed him to get picked off. And then once he was picked off, it was like a, what, a 4v5 on the point, suddenly? Or 4v4, and then a couple of kills go the way of Burn, and all of a sudden it's a completely different fight. And really losing that Sigma, you're losing an incredible amount of value. You're losing his shields, you're losing his Meteor ability, because I'm not going to use the proper name, because it's gross. Just... <laughs> 
you're losing a lot of value by losing that Sigma, especially in the way that he lost it. I think, and I don't know why he turns his flux to where Merge was. If he had fluxed the entrance way where Burn was coming from, he would have gotten so much more value. I think he may have expected more people to pop out. I, yeah, maybe. It just, it didn't work out and really put his team on the back foot there in that kind of off-fight situation. Well, we'll see what they're able to do coming into this next one. I mean, that is a mighty good defense. And if we've seen anything about Burn pushing a payload, well, pardon the pun, they burn through the map. They don't really have much resistance coming in. Um, we haven't really seen MSXL put up what I would say is a top-tier defense when it comes to these payload maps. Now, here's the issue there. Oh, no! Mason... Oh, I forgot... Mi that's a big res being able to come out there but if merge stays on this widow mazen is going to really struggle to get value there's not a lot of unpredictable positioning for afara on this point so we'll see what they're able to do is able to take out that teleporter relatively quickly which is a pretty good amount of value that you can get from that far but mason getting mighty low now requiring that pocket so eating up just lots and lots of value from mithra as red panda puts himself into the kill feed alongside mason now they've lost their mercy. That could be big, losing that support as the respawn advantage is heavily in favor of Burn here. They're going to go ahead and re go back to spawn, regroup, and come As long back as nobody this. gets picked off by Mazen here, I think that that was a really good play by MSXL. Once they had started winning the fight, they pushed their advantage and got enough kills and damage in that Burn had to fall back, and that's going to allow Mithra to come back here and pocket Mazen. Ooh, new approach coming in. They're going to teleport onto the high ground. They tried to do this first push, but were unable to. Mason's going to meet them on the balcony with a barrage. Does lose his life. There is a res available, but Bishop going to go ahead and bait that out from Mithra. Not allowing for the proper amount of time to go by to clear out that area in order to get in that res. So the kills are now going to be flooding in for MSXL. No Luckily, Mithra They stabilize. Yeah. Mithra made a, made a bit of a mistake there trying to go into the res before it was safe. I mean, Chunk was right up there. But then, luckily, you know, MSXL is able to stabilize. They're able to take care of a threat in front of them. And then also deal with Chunk, who's way alone in their back line. So, good work by MSXL there being able to stabilize and kind of stem the flow from being in a possibly uh, risky position. Speaking of a risky position, this is exactly what I was talking about where teams can get bullied here on this first point as you take the first turn. It's so difficult sometimes because there really is only one, I would say, viable avenue of attack at the moment, and that is through the street. Going through that cafe is almost begging to get hit with a dragon strike or, you know, some other large AoE splash damage everything that's going on oh speaking of splash damage and aoe there's a graviton flux going in with the dragons that will go ahead and take out that immortality field but nobody will die good awareness there from burn on this defense they're gonna use their supercharger coming out from bishop maya does have the amplification matrix if he wishes to use it but chunk and merge are both gonna get taken out of the fight oh, that's, that's a huge and, Mason. and oh the anti is absolutely huge, but Bishop and Solno are the ones that are coming in with the big kills. There goes Panda, Remedy, Mason, everybody on the side of MSXL getting taken out one by one. Surfy, the lone Orissa trying to contest for as long as possible. Oh man, 51 seconds left. They may have one more contest. I think they have another contest in them. The big thing there was that Windmill, after he used that alt, they didn't get any kills from it. And they were he ended up way in front of Surfy's shield. And he was taken out from that. And then all Big Muzzy had to do is wait for Surfy's shield to drop once. Boom. Ooh, Fat ante. Huge Graviton Flex coming through. Going to grab at least four members of MSXL right there. Burn looking to push it through onto the first point as the Valk gets used and taken out. Merge the beautiful kill onto that Mercy there. At the very end of that fight, Red Panda trying to fight along, take Chunk out of the fight and keep his team alive at the same time, but it's just a little bit too much. The multitask not able to come through. We'll see well, Burn can move on into the enclosed area, if you will. Mason's going to have to find a big, big alt here if they're going to be able to do anything with this. I mean, Merge has the Deadeye here, which is going to be risky. 
for Mazin. And Big Muzzy with that nano is going to be able to nano probably Chunk, I would believe, is going to be the target. And nanoed Sim is going to be scary for MSXL here. How, I mean, we just saw how lethal that was. 4k at the end of the fight, at the end of the round, just a second ago. There goes the barrage onto the point, able to find two. I think that'll be enough. Out by Bisha. Both Caleb, supports. however, still moving. Just a Both bit. supports, that should be enough, right? Right? You'd, you'd think so. I, I would Caleb hope so. Moves. But the space was not taken by MSXL Burn. Able to get the payload just a little bit farther. There go the dragons to try and kind of stifle and shut up this push here. It will work. They're going to have I, to take that teleport to get back out. But you know, I don't know, I think I don't know if those dragons... I don't know if those dragons were necessary. I think you could have gotten away with not using those dragons there. That's just me. Merge uses his dead eye in what I assume is a fat finger. He, I think he's going back to switch. Is he? Yes, he is. He is. Uh, it does look like he is. He's gonna go yep. ahead and go off to the Reaper. Yeah, they wanna they wanna get a little bit more damage in onto Surfy. You know, you saw it in chat from Owlette Tournament. Surfy is an Arisa god. This is his meta now. He has and been playing very well, I must say. He's playing out of his mind this map. There goes the Supercharger coming out from Bishop as the Reaper goes in to put in the damage. Remedy gonna find the first kill. There goes the Immortality Field and Supercharger, but both are gonna get taken out as Windmills, Graviton Flux finds Bishop, and now Burn able to flow through. They have the kills, they have the bodies. It's a 4v5 on the point as the high charge Symmetra starts to shovel people into this small room with a Reaper. This is not good. Ladies and gentlemen, Merge has everything he wants. A buffet of squishies. Chunk with the high charge beam trying to fight inside this room. Able to take the immortality field out. Looking for Remedy. Finds Red Panda. Finds Remedy. And pretty soon they're going to be able to find the point as the Sigma ultimate comes out from Soul Nil onto that Hammond who is now mighty low. Windmill got slapped and he's out. This could be it. Victory. Wow. Very impressive stuff there coming out by Burn. MSXL not able to get back into that room and out of, you know, out of the range of Chunk's beam. And he's able to clean him up and give the win to Burn. Well-deserved series win there for Burn. Yeah, that is like, without, without analyzing or saying anything just yet, I just want to say wow to both teams. Both of them came out and, you know, they may not have played every every card in their hand, which I don't want them to do, because it's preseason, guys. Remember that. As much as y'all want to see the crazy cool strats, it's preseason. Got to save that for the big surprises. But I do want to give mad chops to both teams for coming out and playing some fantastic Overwatch. Oh, both teams played incredibly well this series. No doubt about it. I just think that, you know, Burn with that Symmetra was able to get, you know, the number of MSXL and just that advantage from having, you know, that comp that was harder for MSXL to deal with, I think that's what provided them the edge today. My only worry for Burn is that, you know, teams are going to be prepared for that Symmetra and looking for ways uh, to counter. The one thing I was very shocked that we didn't see was we didn't see any Sombra come out, which could have been a very good counter, I think, for the Symmetra, especially with that EMP just taking her down to half health right away. But... Again, both teams played very incredibly well, especially for the preseason. We're going to have a great season of Owlet coming up. And, I mean, I think there was, quite frankly, MVPs from both sides. I mean, Chunk played really well. Merge played incredibly well. Big but if Muzzy... you had to choose one. If you I had mean... to choose one. Oh, if I had to choose one. I mean, Chunk and Merge both played incredibly good Symmetra. Surfy there on the Arisa last map was really good. He had 38,000 damage blocked that last map. Uh, Flamia played a really great Ana on King's Row. Big Muzzy also had lots of big antis. But I was I mean, going to say, my, my vote probably goes to Big Muzzy. I, I would, aids were crucial. I would really have to say Big Muzzy, I think. You know, you don't get to be a Symmetra that runs around in the middle of the enemy team if you don't have a support, you know, helping you out. So I definitely think he deserves it, especially with how many antis he had that just changed the course of fights completely. So I, I would have to agree Big Muzzy is probably a good choice for MVP. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Let us know in the Discord. Tweet us out on the Twitters. You know, all of the good stuff about who you think the MVP should be. And if you haven't done it already, make sure you follow us here on Twitch to know when we go live with more games. Go ahead and ask Owlet Tournament in chat, how do I get into that beautiful Discord you have? 
because he'll get you in here. He'll get you in here so you can start figuring out how you play in the Owlette tournament. Or if you're, if you're interested in casting and if you're interested in production, it all happens here, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to learn how to do it, come on in. We will teach you. We will get you into the game. <clears throat> but I think without further ado, that is going to be it for us here at the Owlette tournament. So on behalf of Jackie B., Piper, my wonderful co-caster, myself, and the staff here at Owlette Tournament. Thank you guys so much, and have a wonderful night.